Welcome to Seven Trumpets Prepper, and in this video today, guys, I want to share with you something really neat when it comes to aquaponics. I've been researching for a while a unit that I could use indoors to grow aquaponics, and not only that, but it's portable if I ever needed it to. This is an aquaponical setup. What it does is it has water in the bottom of the unit that sumps off the fish, and then it's pumped up onto the top onto a grow bed that I have strawberries growing in right now. I've got a grow light behind it. Now I'm going to show you in this video how to take it from the box to assembly to a finished product that's running. I'm really excited about this because you can grow aquaponics using this unit all year long, all the time, anywhere in the world. It's epic. It doesn't use a lot of power and it takes care of itself as long as you keep the fish fed. So let's take a look at it now. Okay, now just to note that the aquaponicals units that I've got here, the only place to get these in the U.S. as far as distributor uh, that I know of is aquaponicsource.com, and I would highly recommend getting them there because that's where I got mine. Now, let's check this out. Okay, so to begin with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put the bottom of the tank down with the sump pump. And you can see here there's a fill line. It says fill to here. What we're going to do is we're going to take our pump out. It's an Echo 66 submersible pump. And it's got a couple different tubing options. Now the instruction manual that comes with this tells you the right tube adapter to use. And so I'm going to get that, put it on the pump, install the pump into the side here, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, now I know it's kind of a little bit of a mess here at the moment, but it'll all clear up here shortly. What we've got is our tube from our pump that we put into the inside of the bottom of that, as you can see right there. Now I'll fix that to the sidewall here in just a moment when we get some water to the unit. What I'm going to do now is run this tube up through this back right here until it's good and snug and that's going to push water up and you're going to see right here there's a notch and you're going to match that up with your unit right there. Now I just want to make a note that I did fill the water up to that fill line and what we're going to do now is replace that back as I showed you just a minute ago how to fit in place. This right here is your water level indicator. It kind of bobs in the water. So we're going to put that right there. And then what we're going to do with this is snug this O-ring down. And that is the warning zone. So that kind of lets you know whenever your water has gotten too far below the fill line. You need to keep that uh, somewhere in balance between that right there. Okay. Now. What we'll do at this point is we're not going to put any water in here at the moment. Um, I'm actually going to go and get some fish and we'll put the bags Okay, in. so now we're going to take these aquarium gravel and I'm going to try to have an accent to the bottom of it and uh, we're going to put these in. I've already washed these. Um, I'm just going to do a light layer. I don't want to take up too much space in the tank for my fish. Just work that around. There we go. Now I got some plant material. This is actually, it doesn't have to be planted down in the gravel or anything or in sand. It's actually a banana tree is what it's called apparently. So we're going to put that in first. Um, now the fish, being that this is such a small aquarium, we can go ahead and transfer them as well because the water will accommodate them. And then here is a couple that my wife liked, and we definitely got an algae eater to go in there as well. And now what I'm going to do right now is, being that the water that was down in the bottom, we've left it sitting. I have some water that's at room temperature that I'm slowly going to add to this a little along. What you can do is put the water in, let them acclimate to it, and then open the bags and put them in, but I've kind of had the water sitting at the same room temperature, so I'm going to add that a little along, like I said, but for right now, I just want them to kind of get used to the environment and just add a little more along, and we'll get that done. And in the meantime, while they're acclimatizing to the environment and everything, we'll go in here and we'll fix our grow bed to go on top. 
Now we're going to pause from the build for just a moment from where we put our fish in to bring our grow media into an area where that you can wash it and get the dust off of it. And I brought mine to the restroom. And my wife has these really neat party bowls that you can cap over each other. And so what I'm going to do is that way it helps me from not losing too many of my grow media. But if I tip that back toward my hand, I can drain all the water off and get the nasty dust water out of the way because I noticed whenever I've done this on my large aquaponics setup that my bluegill didn't appreciate it too well I don't think uh, whenever all that clay water ran down into their unit and then after you've drained it you're ready to go now the great thing about it is it came with two bags of this so that was really helpful now remember whenever you get this out to wash this all of it don't just wash half of it okay you wash it all because you don't want the dust in your unit now at this point what we're going to do is assemble a few more things right here's our siphon and the tube that comes up we're going to put it into its appropriate slots in the unit just like so attach that and then we're going to take this right here this diffuser for the water and bring this close right here where the water comes out we're going to put that up over it, just like so. And then I can go into a long description about this right here, but in a nutshell, what this does is help your pH in the water. So when I put the clay media in, I'm going to kind of put this nearby the diffuser, and that way it will help to uh, equalize the water out and get the pH right. So I'll put some of this clay pebble in here and the media, and I'll show you how that looks here in just a minute. Now at this portion of our aquaponics system setup, what we have here is our bag in place next to the diffuser so that the pH will help equalize out. And we have here a little valley cut out. We kind of put the pebbles over to the side. And the reason being is we're going to take a strawberry plant and we're going to wash the roots really good. We're going to wash off all the soil and then we're going to put those roots in right here and the other one right here. And then we'll put the next batch of the media that we're cleaning. We'll put it around that and then fill in around the edges here. And I'm going to leave about a quarter inch gap around this uh, where that there's no uh, pebbles getting raked out on the, the floor or anything like that. So I'll show you here in just a second. Okay, now for example, what we're going to do to get our strawberry plants, that's what I'm going to put into mine, is what you want to do is take and cut away the packing if you've gotten this from a produce place or if you're growing it from a seed, then obviously just wash off where you had it in the seed, uh, had started from a container. And then we're going to take and break this loose very carefully, and what I'm doing is putting that down into the water. I'll show you here in just a second. And the end result will be down to just the root system only. And that's what you want. There might be just a little bit of soil left with it, but not enough to really hurt anything. And so then I will put the media that I have here washed, the second batch, over top of that in just a moment once I finish with this one. But I'll show you right here. Cut that way. Try not to make too much of a mess. This is the messiest part of the whole process. And then just slowly begin peeling this outer uh, carton, the outer board stuff away from it and then just get it down in the water. Now I use a little bit of warm water and then mix a little bit of cold, keep it kind of lukewarm. And then just slowly massage that until the roots kind of let loose from the dirt. And I, I've had to go dump this twice with the first one, um, depending on how big a bucket or whatever you got, you can work this loose pretty easily. But I'll just keep working that, massaging that out of it, and I'll show you here in just a minute how it looks. Okay, so now we have it to the point where it's just practically the root system only. And I mean, obviously there's just a little bit of debris still left in it, but not that big a deal. And what I'm gonna do now is clear up the space over here next to the siphon and work that root system all the way down to the bottom. And now what I'll do now is take this dirty water, set it out of the way until we can go outside and dump it. And then I will take and move this back over the sink so that we can work on it neatly and start placing our grow media in and around and covering the root system good and making sure not to damage the plants. And so I'll show you here in just a minute how this looks when it's finished. One thing I want to compliment about this unit is you definitely get enough material whenever you first start out with this thing. 
Uh, I have plenty of uh, clay media that I have left over now that I'm just going to put in my larger unit that I have outside. Here is the finished product as far as the top goes for the grow bed. Now we have a clear open space where we can feed our fish right through the feed area. And I've also left enough room so that when this does flood, as it floods and then begins the drain process, it won't raise the media so much that it'll fall off the sides. Um, the bale siphon over here, we can see it's still easily accessible and the leaves and everything kind of out of their way. And um, back here on the back side, the diffuser, we can see that it's got plenty of area and uh, the pH bag is just right there beside it. So this is a great setup right here. Um, this ought to create a lot of strawberries as you can see right here since we've got this uh, started up already. Uh, it's going to have some blooms on it for strawberries coming soon. So we'll take this back in here and then once the fish are ready we'll put them into place and then put this on the top and we'll be almost finished. Now from experience uh, I will just recommend that you don't ever do anything with city water when it comes to aquaponics. If you can get water that's spring water I know it's a fortune it's like a dollar for this a bottle I try to start my aquaponic systems anything I do small big whatever with spring water and this will be continued to be added to that bringing that up but if you don't have that option and you've got to get the chlorine out of the water this right here in the instruction manual tells you how to do that with your new system so that right there it, it was provided with mine so that's great and that can help you get the chlorine out also this right here uh, once you get the system started, this can kind of help uh, be beneficial live bacteria to help keep the aquaponics uh, safe for the fish and it'll just help create a good ecosystem. And that was also provided um, and that was made in the USA, so that's really great, both of those. And we'll keep adding the water to this and we'll finish the grow bed and we'll get it on and get the water starting to cycle and these guys should be in business. Okay, now at this portion, what we've got done is we've got our water level almost where we want it. Now at this point, I'm going to insert the collar. You can see these notches the way it is. That goes right back there in the corner, and that keeps any debris or anything coming up and going down into your sump area. We've also installed a grow light here on the wall. Now you can also check at aquaponicsource.com. they got a lot of grow light options. Uh, this one right here is one I use uh, quite consistent with some of my stuff. So anyway, I mounted that on a side angle instead of directly above so that way the uh, plants that are aquatic can get light, the fish get some natural light, and the plants on top will get some light. So now what I'm going to do now is I have set a timer. I'm not going to have mine run constant. I'm going to have it kick on every other hour and I'm going to put that into place in the wall now here with my lighting system because the light will stay on constant. But here in just a second, I'm going to show you the last step on putting your washer and then setting the grow bed on top. Now what we're going to do now is take this washer, and I'm going to wet it just a little bit, and I'm going to set it on top. Now you can put it up in the upper grow container, but I'm going to just leave it as so. And what I'm going to do now is set our grow container directly on top into place. And let our vines down. Now later on, once I get this started good, I'll have to move this to another location because being that the counter space, I'll either have to pull it out or move it because of the restriction on height. But now at this point, all that's left to do is plug the unit in. And now the water will begin to come out. Now as I move the vines here, you can see right here that the water is coming out and it's diffusing it into the top. Now what will happen here momentarily is when this fills up is the siphon will kick in and it will let that water go down back into the fish being clean. And here in a short amount of time all this murky water will quit being murky and it will be clear. And the water from there, once that fills in, will go up and over that down into the sump. And this just continues the process and cleans the water and it keeps the fish healthy and it keeps the plants healthy and growing. Now we can see right here the process of the siphon going and taking place. The water is draining back down into there and then the water is going up and over that back down into the sump. And it's just a really neat process taking place right there and uh, I will show you an update here later as this water begins to clear out. As you can see right here, the water cleared up great. 
um, I found that the murkiness has gone roughly overnight. Um, the clay, the only issue I have from time to time is the clay media. Uh, there was a little bit that got hung in the siphon, but just keep an eye on that. Other than that, the unit runs pristine. I mean, it's just epic. Now, you can set up a bunch of these together. I did have mine on a timer for a little while. I ended up just taking it off, let it run constant. Um, I guess it's user preference. But I think it's a great unit, and for the cost of this, it beats out a lot of the other things on the market because all you really need to add to this is either put it into the light or put a light on it. So make sure to check this out at theaquaponicsource.com. And until we see you again here at Seven Trumpets Prepper Channel, I hope you have a most blessed day in Yahushua name.